silver medalist and Olympic champion from Barcelona moves into third. Estevez, the compatriot, is there in fourth. But now the rhythm really has picked up. El Garouge is pouring it on. He hits the bell two meters up on Morsley. Now, what has Morsley got? At this stage, El Garouge in the Olympics was on the floor and Morsley was clear. This time, it's different. El Garouge is in front and Morsley is chasing. Cacho is there. He's struggling, but he's hanging on. What has Morsley got down the back straight? Can he answer El Garouge? I don't think he can. In fact, he's going backwards. It's Cacho that's coming up. Cacho that's moving up onto the shoulder of Morsley. Maybe that's spurring Morsley on a bit because the rhythm is increasing. But the gap is not. El Garouge is still pouring it on. Cacho is coming past Morsley. Morsley looks tired for once. And the young pretender is going to become king as he comes storming down the home straight. El Garouge takes it. El Garouge kisses the ground where he fell at the Olympics. This time he gets up the world champion. Cacho congratulates him. It was a marvellous piece of running. Confident piece of running. And in the end, a destructive piece of running. The winning time, 3.35.83. What a fantastic finish. I mean, El Garouge was running the last 700 metres at the same pace as the 800 metre runners. He put in a 53.6 lap from 800 to 1200 and had the strength to finish the last lap in 52.5. They hit the bell in this thoroughly absorbing men's 3,000 metre steeplechase. Conceslas Capruto leads on the inside. Evan Jaeger on his shoulder. Ezekiel Kemboy boxed in and still no move from the fastest man in the world this year, Jairus Birec, who now hits the front down the back straight. This is where we find out what the Americans got. And look at the acceleration from Ezekiel Kemboy. He's running like a wild man. He's pulling away from the rest of the field. Well, this is 400 metre pace here at the moment. Has he done enough though? Because chasing him hard, look at this coming into the water jump. Ezekiel Kemboy is going to do it. He clears it by about 10 metres or so. Chasing hard though, Kip Rutu. Kemboy and Kip Rutu now. Kemboy and Kip Rutu. Kip Rutu is closing on this left, but stutters. And that gives Kemboy the chance. And the world champion comes back again for another world championship. Kip Rutu is in second place. I cannot believe the acceleration we just witnessed from Ezekiel Kemboy. We have just witnessed a man cementing his status as the greatest steeplechaser in history. Kovac's best effort in the fourth round, that 21.95. If he throws a season's best or personal best, he's in the conversation for a medal. Oh, that's big. Yes. Kovacs has announced his presence here. We're watching and waiting for the measurement. Romani is in third at the moment with 22.53. Krauser, 22.71. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. 22.91. He takes the lead by a single centimetre. Three men separated by a single centimetre and all of them go down in history. Heiter Henkel, 2 meters 05, trying for a new German record. And getting it. Oh, what a wonderful competition she's had. Far, far superior to the rest of the world's high jumpers. A great display. She came in later than anybody else. At 187, she passed up to 193, soared over, then up to 198. That would have proved enough to win the gold medal. Got over that. Then two metres. Then 202. Now the German record of 205. And only two women in history have ever jumped higher. Those two, Stefka Kostadinova, the world record of 209. And Yudmila Andonova, the other Bulgarian, at 207. The women's long jump takes place over the back straight. And they've got the win with them, so we should see some big jumping. And we have already, because Fiona May took the lead in the first round with 6.86 and then 6.97 in the second before the third round jump. Leggy approach. Oh, and that's near the seven-meter mark. 
coach is nodding with pleasure and agreement. The white flag goes up. Fiona goes down on the knees. Now that should be good enough for a medal, and it should really be good enough for gold. We'll have to wait and see. Lovely range. Look how fast she is behind the board. 14 centimetres plus behind that board. And that's still a seven metre jump, I'm sure. has recorded 7.02, windy though it may be, it still counts in competition. Christian Taylor has one hand on the gold medal he won so brilliantly in Daegu the year before he went on to become the Olympic champion. He has gone over 18 metres this season. Pichardo's under pressure. Taylor, one last chance to launch a massive one. Oh my goodness me, that is absolutely huge. He's been talking about an assault on the world record. I don't quite think it's far enough for 18.29 that Jonathan Edwards produced 20 years ago, but it's still a massive, massive, massive jump. That was absolutely immense from Christian Taylor. The Olympic champion has delivered on the promise early in this season that one day, sometime soon, he would get close to Jonathan Edwards' world record. We're watching, we're waiting. 18.21, that is the second best jump in history and surely that will be too much for Pichardo. Wow, cometh the hour, cometh the man. The Olympic champion has delivered something breathtaking here in the last round. As indeed, of course, is Colin Jackson. Undoubtedly the world's top high hurdler over the last couple of years, but he didn't win the Olympic title. He's improved the European record this year to 12.97. He was third in 87 in these events. And Jackson is away very well indeed. So too is Jack Pier. Tony Dees next to him, and then Tony Jarrett. But Jackson is going clear. Dees is hitting hurdles, he's out of it. Jackson is clear of Pierce, and Jarrett comes up. And Tony Jarrett got the silver, but look at that for Colin Jackson, a British one too, and it's a world record of 12.91. Fantastic running. And Olympic champion, third or second in previous world championships, Yu Shang of China. From China, Yu Shang. Well, Yu certainly running well, so two uh, Tramel in the middle lane to Rob Les inside him. Miss Tramel and Yu, who got to contest this at the finish, it's very close between the two of them. Yu takes it, Tramel is in second place, and David Payne takes the third place. 12.97 for our delighted champion. Well, not quite a championship record or in the world lead, but under 30 seconds, that brilliant running once again. The defending champion being tested now, here. This is her usual run. She then said, OK, you've got them going. Now, in my tempo, please. She does this all her major competitions. Make sure that they're behind her, knowing they're behind her. Here she goes. Second attempt at 2.04. See, Robert was right. 2.04 in her second attempt. That was absolutely superb. Different build up to Friedrich. Who has indicated she's going to pass and try 2.06 next. And the now the Croatian is starting to enjoy herself. She has seized the initiative and she's getting closer to defending this world title. What's this jump? Big jump. Big jump, look at that, two or three centimetres to spare. She really is a class act. Well, there's no question she can get the height, it's just the critical timing of the last three strides. And she's over. She's over. Costa Dinova sets a new world record at her second attempt. Her third world record. But what a wonderful time to do it. It's been just a marvellous day for the crowd here in the Olympic Stadium. She can hardly believe it herself. What a dream.
technically she is wonderful. As the leg drives off and follows through and tucks in and the hips lift and there it is, 2 metres 09.